Uh, welcome back to microwaves and antennas. And we were doing uh, the syllabus across, according to 18C63 and module five, wherein we have covered loop and horn antennas and we were in helical antennas. For helical antennas, we have done the helical geometry and uh, in helical geometry also, we have seen the dimensions of the helical antenna and we have seen how these dimensions can be represented by a helix chat. So the textbooks are antennas and wave propagation by John D. Cross. And these are the reference books. So we are talking about the helix chat. Okay, now this helix chat is nothing but uh, a diameter spacing chat. This is nothing but a diameter spacing chat or a circumference spacing chat. So, and here all these diameters or uh, the helix diameters, uh, the circumference, the turn, uh, the spacing S lambda, all these are ex expressed in terms of the wavelengths. So instead of saying C is equal to one mm, I'll say that C is equal to lambda by four, something like that. Lambda is once again uh, expressed in terms of uh, is a wavelength, which can be expressed in terms of uh, millimeters, micrometers, nanometers, etc. And so you will talk about C in terms of in terms of wavelength. Similarly, S in terms of wavelength and D the diameter D in terms of wavelength. And you also have the length of the turn, the length of the each turn that is also represented as. Uh, C by lambda, sorry, L, L lambda, and you have the pitch angle alpha, and the pitch angle alpha. Now let us look into the helix chat, a brief recap. The helix chat, the helix chat, as you know, is a uh, represented on the x-axis by this turn spacing. So this is S, the spacing between the turns. So the x-axis is uh, the turn spacing in terms of lambda. This is your abscissa axis. Then the y-axis or the ordinate axis, you have the circumference C lambda. So how do you get the circumference C? C is equal to pi D, pi into capital D. So D is the diameter. So when I look from this side, when I look from this side, it's a cylinder and I get a circle here. The diameter of the circle is D. So the circumference of the circle is C is equal to pi D. And this is the length of uh, one turn. This is the length of one turn. This L is, uh, uh, can be re represented in terms of C and S. So from the triangle, L is equal to square root of C square plus uh, S square. C square plus uh, uh, S square. Okay. Now, uh, last class, we have seen how you can represent a point here. So the pitch angle is 0 degrees, 15 degrees, 30 degrees, up to 90 degrees. So this line represents a zero degree, this represents 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and till 90 degrees. Similarly, you have the turn length L, the turn length L. So uh, on all these points on this curve, the turn length is 2.5. So 2.5 is equal to square root of C square plus S square. So when you see that S is zero, and S is zero, uh, what is the C value? The C value is 2.5. And similarly, uh, this keeps uh, going further, this keeps going further. So then we similarly, we have the turn length two, the turn length 1.5 and one. Here, there are certain extremes in this helix chat. One is when the spacing between the turns reduces to zero. So when the spacing between the turn tends to zero, what will happen? You have only the circumference. You have the variation in the circumference. So the variation in the circumference means you are going to vary the diameter T. So this becomes a loop angle, a loop antenna. The helix will become a, a loop antenna. 
and you are varying only the diameter d the loop diameter you will be varying or the circumference will keep increasing so at this extreme at this extreme uh, when s is equal to 0 when s tends to 0 uh, the helix becomes a loop the helix tends to become a loop then you have the other extreme the other extreme is uh, when c is equal to 0 when c lambda equal to 0 when c lambda equal to 0 when c lambda tends to 0 you have only the spacing variation you have the spacing variation the spacing variation is this now the helix will become the helix will become a dipole so the helix uh, will become a dipole so what are the two extremes the helix can become a loop and when does it become a loop when s tends to zero when s tends to zero it becomes a loop and only the loop parameters the loop parameters are given by the diameter d or the circumference c the other extreme is when the circumference uh, uh, tends to zero so or the diameter d the circumference is nothing but the diameter d the d tends to zero this d tends to zero uh, what will happen to the helix helix will become a dipole instead of this uh, helix being a, di a loop and a dipole helix becomes a pure dipole and in between these two extreme values in between these two extreme values between the loop and dipole you have the helix so the helix is represented between the two extremes which are the two extremes one end on the abscess axis you can see that this is axis of linear conductors so what does this mean axis of linear conductors linear conductors are nothing but dipole this axis of that is you can have only s is varied and this is the axis of loops so the when you vary only the circumference when you vary only the circumference of the diameter d with s is equal to zero this is known as the axis of loops next so we have the other areas of operation so you can see that this is the normal mode and this is a bifilar mode in bifilar mode also you have this normal and backfire then you have the quadrifilar mode and then uh, you have uh, the axial mode with this this one is your axial mode so all these points are being represented here so when we go, go to the op modes of operation this will come into picture so let us continue further as we have seen when the spacing is zero this can be also expressed in terms of alpha so when the spacing is zero alpha becomes zero when s tends to zero this comes here what happens to alpha alpha tends to zero and alpha tends to zero and this will be the axis of loops so it will become a loop antenna the other extreme which is the other extreme c tends to zero or diameter d tends to zero so if this tends to zero you bring it down you're squashing it alpha tends to 90 degrees you are going on reducing this only s is there s becomes longer and longer and the alpha tends to 90 degrees and in this case it becomes the axis of linear conductors that is only dipoles that is this is in between this is in terms of alpha this is in terms of alpha so when the spacing is zero alpha is zero helix becomes a loop when the diameter is zero or the circumference is zero alpha becomes 90 degree and the helix becomes a linear conductor so you can say that the ordinate axis that's your y-axis represents the loop while the abscess axis as the x-axis represents the linear conductor the area between the two axes represents the gentle case of the helix so this is the area between the two axes that represents the gentle case of the helix but we also have a special case uh, let us consider a one turn helix with a turn length of one lambda so when you look at this term length of uh, one lambda 
uh, you will be using this portion of the helix. So in the chat, you have this uh, uh, turn length L equal to one lambda. In this case, when alpha is zero, so this is your alpha, this tends to zero. Alpha tends to zero when S tends to zero. So when S tends to zero, this will come here and you get a loop antenna. So the loop antenna will be having a diameter equal to uh, one lambda, C by lambda. This is C by lambda. What is C? C is equal to one lambda. The other case, when you increase the uh, pitch angle, when alpha increases, the circumference decreases. And uh, once again, uh, you move around this uh, same curve, L lambda equal to one curve, until alpha becomes 90 degrees. So when, uh, once alpha is 90 degrees, that is C is tending to zero, and uh, the helix becomes a straight line. This is the axis of linear conductor, and the conductor is one lambda. And as we have seen, the various operational modes are also represented in the figure. So this we have finished, the helix chat, and uh, this is a complete one. So this is your uh, lambda equal to the L equal to one, the turn length. And uh, we can see the other extremes. The, uh, coming to the next portion, the next portion is uh, uh, the helix modes, the different types of uh, helix modes. Uh, there are many ways of representing the helix mode. Two of the modes are the T mode and the R mode. The T mode is uh, the transmission mode and R is the radiation mode. So let us look at the T mode. In the T mode, uh, we are assuming that the electromagnetic wave, the EM wave, propagates along an infinite axis. Uh, so that's an infinite, uh, you, you are considering that the helix is not finite. It's an infinite transmission line and it keeps transmitting in this. It keeps traveling this uh, in the helix. Often you're assuming that the helix is infinite and this uh, EM wave is propagating in this infinite helix. So which are the modes that we have? One is the T naught, the lowest mode, the charges are separated by several turns. So this is your T mode, T naught mode. And you can see that the waves are traveling in the, the electric field is along the axial one. So the E is axial. And you can see that uh, from one end to the other, the charges, uh, you have uh, the linearly polarized wave. You can see that uh, the EM wave plus to minus, between one plus to minus, there are several turns. This is your T naught mode. In this case, uh, the length L, the turn spacing is lesser, lesser than, the length of the one is lesser, lesser than lambda. Then we have T1 mode. T1 mode is transverse mode. So this is axial mode. The electric field is having axial mode. So this transfer mode occurs when C is equal to lambda. And you can see this in T1 mode. Uh, for one turn, uh, this uh, uh, electromagnetic wave, when it is traveling through the helix, it will change its polarity. What do you mean by changing its polarity? Uh, this is becoming uh, plus to minus. So it is becoming from plus to minus. So, so when does this, uh, from one end of the wire to the other end of the wire, when it is traveling, uh, it requires one whole complete turn. It requires one whole turn. In T1 mode, it requires one turn. So when in T naught mode, from this point, the electric magnetic wave, so it becomes like this. So this is positive till here, and then it becomes negative, and again positive. So the, the electromagnetic wave here takes several turns, and this is traveling in the x-axis. It's propagating in the x-axis, axially. It is propagating in the axial, helix axis. Whereas here, uh, the EM wave, uh, it is changing its polarity in one turn, but it is pro propagating in the transverse direction. So this is T1 mode. So in T1 mode, you can say that uh, this is one turn. So this is one turn of the helix. So by the time it goes from one to the next turn, uh, it is having 180 degrees. That is, it will... Uh, so the angle between the plus and minus is one. This whole thing is your 
uh, L. The whole thing is your L. The whole thing is your L. And uh, between one end to the other end, the angle is 180 degrees. So in T2 mode, by the time it travels, the wave travels one complete loop. By the time the wave travels a complete loop, what would have happened uh, in this L, same L, uh, it would have made two transitions. It would have made two transitions or two wavelengths. So this is your wave. So it would have made two transition from plus to minus, again from plus to minus. So here, uh, the angle between the polarities is 90 degrees. The angle between the polarities is 90 degrees. So in T3 mode, higher mode, same L. Okay, same L. So you have three waves. You have three waves. And the angle between the waves is 90 degrees. The angle between the waves is So as you have seen, so we have the different modes. T naught is a basic mode, okay, the lowest order. The higher order is T1. So in the lowest order mode, okay, uh, between uh, the polarity change, you have multiple turns between the polarity change. And this is uh, the E is traveling in axial direction. The electromagnetic field is uh, propagating is in the axial direction. And uh, in the other modes, T1 mode, uh, T2 mode, T3 mode, uh, this is in transverse propagation. Uh, this is for, okay, we have seen that uh, last class we have told when L is smaller, we have a small dipole and a small loop. When L is lesser, lesser than lambda, you have this axial uh, the mode that is uh, parallel to the axial axis. When C is lambda, that is when it is uh, the, uh, the dimensions are comparable, the dimensions are comparable, then you can see that uh, this is in transverse direction. So in T1 mode, when the wave travels uh, from one turn, when the wave travels one turn of the wire, uh, it will make uh, the E wave, the E wave will make, have a plus to minus uh, one and before the next plus or minus it will be 180 degrees so this is your t1 mode in t2 mode uh, for the same in one length in one turn of the length it will have two polarity changes it will have two polarity changes so here uh, the angle is between 90 degrees and t3 it will have you can see that it is between plus to minus and minus to plus plus to minus and so you can express it in terms of this so you have uh, three and uh, three this is your t3 uh, this is your t3 and here the angle is 60 degrees the angle is degree. similarly for tm uh, similarly for tm for tm the angle will be uh, continuing pi by m So let us look at the thing. So in transmission mode, uh, the electromagnetic wave propagates along the helix axis, assuming that the helix is an infinite transmission line or a waveguide. Here, T naught is the lowest mode and the charges are separated by several turns. So in T1, which is a higher mode, uh, this is your transverse uh, mode. T naught is axial mode, okay? And here T1 is transverse mode. And here the charges are separated by one turn. So in T2 mode, the charges change their polarity twice in one turn, or you can say they're separated by 90 degrees. Similarly, Tm, they're separated by pi by m degrees, where m is the order of the mode. Then you have the radiation mode. So the radiation mode or uh, the normal mode or omni mode uh, of uh, radiation, there are two modes uh, in radiation mode. What does this radiation mode describe? It describes a far field pattern of a finite helical antenna. So what does this mean? I have this helical antenna here, finite mode and its effect. This is your E phi or E theta, that's your far field EF you can see. So the far field pattern, how does it look? 
is represented by the R mode. In R mode, once again, uh, uh, you have uh, the two modes. One is a normal mode, that's your omni mode of radiation, where the radiation beam is perpendicular to the helix axis. And then we also have uh, the axial mode or B mode of radiation that is known as R1. And here the radiation beam is parallel to the helix axis. In R0, it is normal or omni mode. The radiation is uh, perpendicular to the helix axis. In R1, the same radiation is parallel to the helix axis. So as the name indicates normal, it is perpendicular to the helix axis. So axial mode is parallel to the helix axis. Okay, you can also have a combination of transmission and radiation modes. Uh, they can uh, they can exist, coexist. So these are the figures of R0 mode. So this is your coaxial cable and ground plane, and this is your helix antenna. So here the radiation is uh, normal mode. R0 is normal mode. The radiation is uh, 90 degrees or normal, perpendicular to the uh, helical axis. So where is a, a helix axis? So this is your a helix axis. So the radiation is perpendicular to this. Then in R1 mode, okay, in R1 mode, so you can have the direction of this uh, uh, in axial mode. This is axial mode. Okay, in axial mode, it is uh, uh, parallel to the, this is parallel to the helical axis. So this is a helical axis. So here it is perpendicular. And here it is parallel. So this is a combination of uh, T naught and R1. In T naught, it will take a lot of time to change. And uh, this is axial T naught and also the R1 mode combination. And then T1 R1 mode. So once again here, uh, alpha is less than C. Uh, you can have the different modes where it will change if one. So T naught will travel like this and T1 will travel and it's a combination mode both the transmission as well as uh, uh, reception. So this finishes the uh, modes of the operation. So as we have seen, uh, what are the modes of the operation? Uh, the helix modes. There are two types of helix mode. One is a T mode, transmission mode, and the other is R mode. In T mode, uh, we are assuming that the helix is infinite. And in this, we have T naught as the lowest mode, wherein uh, the charge between uh, several terms, the charge will uh, change its thing. It is traveling in the axial direction. And this is for small loops or dark, small dipoles where L is lesser, lesser than lambda. Uh, when we have a, a larger helix antenna, E is transverse in direction. And with these are the modes, uh, T1 mode, where it will change the polarity in one turn. Here in T2, the polarity changes twice, and in T3, uh, it will be thrice, and so on. Then you have radiation mode. And then this is for this describes a far field pattern, the far field pattern of a silent, uh, finite helical antenna. The far field pattern can be perpendicular to the helix axis. If the radiation beam is perpendicular to the helix axis, it is a normal mode or omni mode. And if it is axial or parallel to the helix axis, it is an axial or B mode. Here it is known as R1. Here it is known as R0. And these are the figures for R0 and R1. And this can be also a combination of T and R modes. So next we'll be talking about uh, uh, the practical design considerations for the monofilar uh, axial mode helical antenna. And uh, here uh, we're talking about the different uh, uh, considerations.